about 18 months ago, I was asked to uh, I was asked to sit down and interview Colin Brown and ask him how he managed to uh, get this book together. I don't know what I was expecting to say really, but uh, it, it transpired. It was it was quite an extraordinary story. It's quite bizarre. See, my father was in the dance band business. I met up with Mr. Ganella. I couldn't say Ganella in those days, so he lived next to one to me in Edgware. I used to call him Mr. Trumpet Man, and he gave me six records, which I've still got four of them. When he moved to Wembley, I started washing, brush, washing out, brushing, grooming the horses for Mitchell, Mitchells the Bakers. They had six carts, six horses. I used to get to one pound ten shillings and be there at six o'clock in the morning and wash them all out. And when the evening used to do a bit and straight down the record shop before it closed. All the money went. It all grew out of uh, Colin's obsession for collecting records. He, he must have been the first of a breed, as it were, people like well, me nowadays. <laughs> Except in those days he was collecting 78s uh, because that was, the, um, that was the currency. And he was particularly uh, obsessed with or a big fan of... Uh, Nat Ginella. In those days, uh, Colin, who was then quite young, sort of about 1947, 48, used to hang around a, a, what he described to me as a notorious um, amusement arcade in Soho. And uh, one day he asked, it transpires, he asked the proprietor if he could put some Nat Ginella records on the jukebox. Um, to which the proprietor is supposed to have said, was the effect of yes, if you pay for them. And then a couple of weeks later, he was looking at the jukebox and realised there were about four more Nat Ganella records on the jukebox, which he hadn't given the proprietor. And it transpired that the jukebox actually kept a record, um, a mechanical record, of how many plays each disc got. And his Nat Ganella record had suddenly got the number one on that jukebox, you know, got the most plays. So the jukebox operator had then gone out and bought a load more. After this jukebox chart, I thought, well, it'd be nice to see how things got on. And I thought, well, if I make a chart, make a chart, I, 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 you know, I've got it for, for life. He approached a number of uh, music publishers and record companies and, and distributors and asked if he could have copies of their sales information. He started collecting, saving this information and then gradually went back round to the record companies and publishers that had already turned him down. And um, to a surprise, they all kind of relented and said, yeah, okay then. What he did was he went out and rented a couple of lock-up garages in Willesden and started archiving, is the word we would use now. But he had a load of uh, friends that were musicians, professional musicians, who never had enough work to do. And then went to this printer, I think it really was now, Somewhere in, somewhere in Shoreditch, I can't remember the name of the place, but they do, you're doing books and things like that. And of course, he was all for it. I was there one day watching him, putting him in all letters one by one by one. I mean, I've never seen a printer, I've never been to a printer. But I said, tweezers, putting him in tweezers. I thought, well, that's going to take years. So I went down there and got next door, they said they went bust. Then, one of the last people to have it, he had it for nearly two years, and he did two pages. And now I have to say to Steve, you know, this bloody chart, I'd never get it done now. It's been four different people having a go at it, it's gone down the hole each time. So he said, I'll do it for you, I'll do it, let me have it. And that's how it all happened. It was during a conversation with Colin that he mentioned the fact that he tried for years and years to put this chart together. He had all this information on various notebooks. So I said to Colin, I'll give it a go. Silly me thinking it would be you know, a six month project. So the whole basis of the book is, is Colin's um, chart data, his, his sales data from reps, from what was wholesalers in those days, not record companies. They went through um, three, three major wholesalers. So I think it's uh, fascinating from the fact that it's based on actual sales to the store. So. I believe it's a, you know, a really good, accurate uh, picture of what was selling at the time. My role with official charts company at the time, with, with the books, was just to make sure that every bit of information, the title, the artist, complete name, the label, the 
catalogue numbers, the chart positions, and all the information that goes into these chart books was as accurate as it could be. Steve uh, came in to see the official charts company people, and you know, from there, another, another couple of years went by as we worked on the book, checking everything, uh, all, all kinds of things, but I mean, there was a lot of, lot, lot of work gone into it over the last three, four years. Uh, and the official charts company, you know, were convinced, yeah, let's get on board as well. And that's where we are today. Yeah, unfortunately, Colin died a year ago, so he never got to see the, the finished pr product. But uh, I did keep him updated with uh, sort of envelopes full of uh, printouts and PDFs and all sorts. He was getting quite excited about the whole thing.